Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the Z Chuen form, also known as the Z Zin Yi form. Right? Zin Yi means heart mind, as we know. Uh, it's practiced in the countryside of Shaolin, different villages. It's called different things. So this is called Z Chuen, according to the Chuen Pu of one person from the late 1600s, early 1700s. And Chuen Pu is a book of forms. And some uh, these people had their ancestor went to Shaolin and practiced. So we had all the forms preserved. So XIE in Pinyin stands for slanted or twisted. It's the same character as in Brushni twist step. There's a lot of similarities with Chen Tai Chi. It follows it along pretty closely. It even repeats in the same place. So I put a chart so you can see it for yourself. And it's got like things that only can be found in Chen Tai Chi, such as the commencement is the same. Right? The move is the same. Right? Chen does the same exact thing. And then they come around and then they do the down here instead of over here. Okay? The blue dragon coming out of the sea. And then the other move is this one where you jump and land like this. All right, that's only found in Chen Tai Chi and this form. And you know, you come around, around, and bounce down, and then bounce up. <laughs> Pretty strenuous. doing there it goes this way
Okay, so it starts like this. Does the commencement, like Tai Chi, comes up like this. Boom, just like Tai Chi. Just like Tai Chi. And then, it's called Split the Mountain, but it's the same as White Green Spreads His Wings. And then look, the same as Chen Tai Chi, Russian he twists that. And look, you're twisted. Your foot is twisted out. Then you come back. Then you step. Then you do this again. Then you come back. Then you jump and push. Then you slide all the way down and then you come back up. And then, guess what you do? Where did you see this before? Look, one, two, three. The only two forms, the Chen style in this. And then look, it does this just like Chen does. All right, then it's like doing repulse monkey. Whip back to this guy. Come in, step, jump. This is called you're doing this. That's called Fair Lady. Maybe that's the original way to do it. So you're like this one, two, three, spin, cloud hands. Cloud hands, punch, and punch, and cloud hands, like this. Now we're gonna do it just like Tai Chi. Kick, kick, look at that. The only difference now is that you're stepping over. Hook, elbow, step, step, back fist, back fist, back fist. This is found in the Pao Choi form. One, two, three, four, down. Come around, open, swing, kick, change feet, turn the hand over. Go like this, go like that. Bo Wang, and then golden chicken, stands on one leg, kick. Come around, down like this, kick. Again, and go like this. Boom. This is all found in Tai Chi. Boom. Boom. This is from Xing Yi. A sparrow hawk traveling through the forest. Got the same name. Bang. Go. Okay. I'm too old to do this move. It's exactly the same as Chen Tai Chi. Nobody has seen this move in anything but Chen Tai Chi and this form. And then you push down and you come up. And then single whip. Single whip. Come back. Step. And you repeat again, like in Tai Chi. Repeat. All right. Step, step. Come around. One, two, three, four, five, six. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And then you're about to kick, but you kneel first and do an elbow. Then you kick. Then you do this and that. Then. Punch, close, hook, kick, bawang lifts the cauldron, jump, boom, boom, boom. Right? That ending is in essence the same as in Tai Chi. So let's look at how many things are like Tai Chi. It's incredible. And especially since the whole form. The Chen Tai Chi form follows this form exactly. So what does that mean? The Sun Tai Tzu and this form are like the frame. And even in the Chen, the Chen Zin XIN, 
and he wrote that book that came out after he died and all the different papers they found at Shaolin, right? Um, I think it's Chen Ziming. Anyway, it says Chen Tai Chi comes from Shaolin Taizu Chang Chuan. It says it plain as day. Chen's own family papers from the ancient times says it, okay? The form is that form. You can look at the chart that I put the link to and you can see it. So they must have used this form, okay? So here's the weird history about this form. Uh, these uh, French researchers were in China in the 1980s and they were looking at Shaolin form that was done in Kaifeng and the other areas outside of Shaolin Temple, not that far. Um, Kaifeng is like near Luoyang, I think. But it used to be the capital. When Zhao Kuanyin was a general in the Tang Dynasty, uh, Kaifeng was the capital. All right. So they found the form and they thought they were looking at Chen Tai Chi. They're like, Wow, it's got, like Chen Tai Chi, it's got that kick and then fall down and do the split like Chen Tai Chi. No two forms ever exist other than these two, the Chen Tai Chi form and this slanting fist form. Nothing shows, that's 80 moves that I just did. That Nothing is like that in any other form anywhere. Now, we were... It's not far from Chen Village, where they found this form. Not far at all. It's also similar to Zhao Bao. So Zhao Bao adds these like 22 skidoo, 23 skidoo things in their form. Uh, they're embellishing. Um, but there's something really needs to be investigated. Um, they wrote a book, these French researchers, but it's sold out everywhere, it's in French, and they do have a blog, and they have all the information you need to know. But I repeated all the information in my book, The Hidden History of the Chinese Internal Martial Arts. So everything, I have all the pictures of Chen style in, in this form, and I have the whole form in Chinese in this book. This is a, a book that the author found in his family from descended from the 1600s so, um, his ancestors uh Chuan Pu you know book manual of forms and there's a this is the old way to do the forms and this form is in it it's form in it except in here it's called Zinyi heart mind imaginative right it means imaginative form now, some people call, in, in the original city where the French people found it, it was called slanting boxing, which makes sense, right? Because you're doing, a lot of times you're doing brush knee twist step. The Yang, or the Chen way, not the Yang way, brush knee twist step, right? You go in like this, and then brush knee twist step, and you actually twist your step and you actually brush your knees. It goes all the way down, brush the knees, twist that, okay? I mean, how much more can you see how Chen borrowed from here? Because look at all the pieces to, to the chai, tai chi forms, okay? Uh, right, you got this, and then it goes to, look, I'm doing the old Chen, okay? Has more moves. It's like a yin yang thing. And then it's yang and, chen and old chen are closer together. Okay? Then you go back, hook, come in. Okay, we know about that. We know about this. It's got a, it's got a like a pong lu ji. And then four ceiling, fixed closing, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Then it does. Single whip. Okay, so take it up to there. 
Where do those moves come from? This is from the emperor form. This is from all those Shaolin forms. It's at the beginning of all the Shaolin forms, okay? Then, single whip is a, the Taoist part. This is the Shaolin single whip, okay? What is a single whip? It's a stick that goes across that holds two pails, okay? You can hold it like this, but this, this comes from the, uh, the Hua Shan longevity exercises. They are the parallel to the Shaolin Chen Yun Gung and uh, Lohan 13 postures. So look, you go like this and you hook like you're doing single whip. You hook like you're doing single whip. You hook like you're doing single whip. You hook, I should, I should document that on video, the, the form. It's got a lot of parts. Okay, so after you do this, you're here. All right. Now, what comes next? Right? So, Chen goes like this, like the Shaolin forms do. Goes like this, like the Shaolin forms do. And does this, like the Shaolin forms do. Then it steps back and does White Crane spreads its wings like the Shaolin forms do. All right? Then what happens? Brush, knee, twist, step. Okay, the old Chen doesn't do this and then do it again. It goes right into the next part. So it goes like this, right? Okay, goes right in. Then punch, twist, okay? Punch twist. It's a little different than the other yang. Punch. And then I'm doing the old chen. All right, so um, let's look at how many things are like the form I just did. So from here, boom, old chen goes like this, just like what we just did. And look, what we just did. All right, that's the blue dragon, green dragon coming out of the water. Okay, so you both, they both do this. The Chen goes here and Yang goes here, okay? And then you come around, fist under elbow, and then look, repulse monkey. So what does the form do? The Shaolin form does this bang, bang, bang thing going backwards. It's like in Chen, this is called whirling hammers. It's not necessarily called it's not called a repulse monkey, okay? Then it has a chop down, come up. I'm doing the old Chen. It has a Zhao Bao 23 skidoo thing. Punch, circle. Okay. So the segment from White Crane Spreads His Wings is always followed with brush knee twist step. Always. Okay. Whether you're doing Chen or Yang or Wu or how or what <laughs> or Sun doesn't matter. And in Shaolin, brush knee twist step is always followed after White Crane spreads his wings. So it's almost like little pieces of forms, the Chen style, and then automatically that's the Yang style, because the Yang style is the Chen style, just adjusted over time, okay? Yang Cheng Fu changed it a lot, but look, Tian and all these other people, they kept the old version. And according to plenty of people, eyewitness accounts, Yang Cheng Fu knew the old way of doing it. And he did it at an exhibition once, okay? Did he teach it? No. So then Wu wanted to do his own smooth uh, doing it for health version. So then they created the, you know, the Wu style version of Yang Cheng Fu's form. But digressing. All right, so that whole piece from here then it becomes single whip, right? From single whip to uh, 
My crane spreads its wings. Two brush knee twist step. Isn't the Chen one is so similar? Okay, then you continue. The old Chen continues, continues. Then it does this again. The same as the form we just did. The form we just did, the Shaolin form, uh, the first time you're here, then you circle, do this. Then you're here, step, then you do it again. See? See? Then you come back, and you step, and then you do all the other stuff. So that's similar. Now what happens after you finish all the blah, 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 and you do apparently close up, right? And then you're going into, to, right? Take a tiger to the mountain, whatever the heck. It's called leopard in the old, old styles, okay? Um, so what happens here in the, in the yang? You're doing brush, wash face, look at the picture, wash face, look at the picture. The old yang goes back. Rolls the ball like repulse monkey. It looks like you're gonna do it again. Except you do grasp the bird's tail. And then you do this like the Chen Yun Gong. Protect the house. Circle around. Okay. So that's Yang Tai Chi. So what do we have that's similar to Tai Chi after is the Cloud hands. So the Shaolin Zichuan goes one, two, three. You see, it does, it does what Tai Chi does if you slow it down. I mean, I did that form super slow. They do that form in seconds. I don't know how they do it so fast. It's crazy. So you have that. And then look, after the last one of this, you go like this. And what happens? Toe kick, toe kick, come down, box the ears, circle. Now, Yang and Chen go like this, okay? What does this form do? After you box the ears, you open, you step behind, because that's classic Shaolin. Step behind, lift your foot when you lift your hands. Kick, scoop down. Then, you know that this is called part, part the horse's mane in this form? Part the horse's mane, bum, bum, bum. Okay, this is from Pao Choi. Right, now we're getting to the Tai Chi form. So, you got that. That's the same. Toe kick, toe kick, come around, circle, circle, side kick, right? That's just like Tai Chi. Um, well, look at the charts that I made and you'll see how they overlap and everything will make sense. It's no use me saying everything over and over here. Look at the charts and then it will make sense. Okay, I am the only person ever to document the slanting fist form, okay? There's snippets of it on YouTube and if you don't know what it is, you won't recognize it, okay? It's in my channel. It's in my channel under Zinyi Tiger because that's what it's called now. Um, and there's a guy in white He's doing the f pieces of the form. They keep cutting, but they do one piece from every section over and over till the form's done. But it's so fast. I think it takes him two minutes to do the whole form. I'm astonished when he, I mean, and I said, there's always Xingyi in, in uh, the old Shaolin. It's uh, after it does this kick, you're doing the, the sp Sparrowhawk enters the forest, okay? But then he's got this giant kick and lands down like that. And 
I've seen videos of old Chinese men slamming down like this. Then he pushes himself up, and then he comes up and does something like bawang, except it's on the other side. And probably golden chicken, all right? So a golden chicken stands on one leg. In the Tai Chi forms, it's, they're doing it on two sides, okay? And there's a kick in it. Originally, it was bawang first, then golden chicken stands on one leg with the kick, and then you do <laughs> repulse monkey or whirling red hammers. That's what it's called in Chen. That's a big deal. That's a real big deal to understand. So, now let's explore next. I'm gonna have to tape the old Xiao Hong Chuan, the old, um, it's not really red, it's all old flood fist. Some people, in honor of the Ming Dynasty Emperor, call it the red fist. That, that didn't get changed till the 1800s, so. It's the flood fist. It's the flowing fist. It's Tai Chi. Tai Chi was originally called Long Fist. It was also called Ro Chuen when they first started learning about it. People called it Ro Chuen because it looked like Shaolin Ro Chuen. Duh. People called it the long flowing fist because it looked like Hung Chuen when Yang Lu Chan did it. It wasn't way later it became called Tai Chi. The grand ultimate boxing. It doesn't mean Tai Chi this, the Tai Chi symbol. No, the characters stand for grand ultimate, like best restaurant, grand ultimate, okay? So grand ultimate boxing. Because the Yang Lu Chan was undefeated. And like I said in my other video, don't believe this, the stories that they made up in ancient times. He was a child prodigy martial artist. He learned Shaolin Hung Chuen. The Wu brothers that also studied it with him in his village that he's originally from, they were rich. He was dirt poor. They don't associate, but they associated with him because he was great. Okay? Later, further away, he worked at a drugstore, pharmacy, and then uh, which was near... The Chen family cousins, the Li, L-I, um, salt store, where they mysteriously found not only the Tai Chi classics there, but another book too later. They found the Li family genealogy charts that show when things got taught to who. So, concerning ancient Tai Chi. Now, in the, in the village where the Li family's from, they also practiced, hardly, maybe there's two people left alive. They practiced a prototypical, what we would call Chen Tai Chi, didn't have a name, okay? And then the neighboring villages, I've seen videos of them doing something that looks like a uh, this slanting form and Chen Tai Chi. So it's something that was in the area, okay? And uh, the, in, in that county, the county, and what's part of that county? Shaolin Temple is part of that county. Deng Feng Village, where there's a lot of people from Shaolin went, and then all the other neighboring villages. Now, let's talk about something about Shaolin. There's a lot of jerks on YouTube that don't know what they're talking about, and they always are trying to correct the people who do know what they're talking about. Okay, the last time Chen, uh, Shaolin got destroyed was in 1949 from the Japanese, okay? 1925, there was the fire, blah, blah, blah. The Japanese just crushed it. Okay, every time there was something bad, everybody left the countryside and into the countryside, all right? Like I said, Shang family Shaolin is in the north area, and they practice Shaolin from a certain time period in the 1500s. They have Chuen Pu. The, 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 the forms book with the big explanation. I got a copy in English. Uh, I translated it from Chinese, but I was shown it of a Chuen Pu from the 1700s. And it has a Ro Chuen and the Lohan. It has all the forms that are 
part of what we're talking about in there, okay? And, okay, so everything went into the countryside. Shaolin was pretty much dead. It started coming back when the Cultural Revolution was easing off. Plus, they were in a remote area. So, Wu, Guo, Wu Shanlin and Wu Guo Lin, his son, were part of a family that had monks and they knew the Shaolin forms and they knew hundreds of them. They memorized them, okay? Uh, there's a guy that copied all the forms books from Shaolin and he, he escaped with the copies. I think the originals burnt in the fire of 1925. But he's got all the copies of the forms. The Shaolin Encyclopedia is all the forms he copied plus Sidi Sidi Jian. He's died of cancer. Um, before I wrote my book, I was corresponding. All right, he helped me immensely with his Shaolin Encyclopedia, and we he went into not only the countryside but all the way to Indonesia to people who are still doing Shaolin. And he documented everything everybody was doing. And so, the Shaolin Encyclopedia is the, the original version of it, all right? There's been three printings. The original is two volumes. The, in, they've finished it, and it's a four-volume one came out. And then there's a two-volume in uh, the photo, uh, all photos. Right? There's no English version. They wanted me to do it. Can I spend five years <laughs> doing that? I'm already in my 60s. So I don't know how the hell that happened. I only feel 35. So I don't know. I feel younger than that. So listen. So Wu Shan Lin and Wu Guo Lin were doing Zinni Ba. It's an ancient Shaolin thing that's based on Xing Yi from Jilong Feng's ideas. And it's an internal martial art, okay? And it's a lot of this stuff. This is Zinni Ba in that ape, monkey ape form. This is Zinni Ba, okay? Those are moves from there. The Qigong in it is moves from there. So people were teaching it in the countryside. In the countryside near Shaolin, you can learn at the time where this material got preserved from the Taizu Chang Chuan style and the ancient Shaolin and who brought it back to Shaolin. There was the abbot was still there in the countryside and some other Su Zhu Zin, uh, I don't know, people who know Shaolin know who their exact names I forgot right I'm wearing I'm more interested in how to do what correctly so but I love the history I mean I wouldn't have wrote a history book I need to know the history so they taught the forms to a, a guy who became a monk C D Gen G E N and a lot of monks named themselves after him who are the ones who are serious about traditional martial arts okay so they see the Jen, see the John, see the Jin. So they're all very similar, and they all do traditional. Okay, so Deng Feng Village had all these forms. Okay, so see the Jen taught a bunch of people, about eight or nine people. Uh, they were from Deng Feng Village, so that's where you can find a lot of the stuff he preserved. Okay, so idiotic people on YouTube are saying, CD Jen teaches the outsider, the village stuff. And he didn't teach the, he doesn't teach the stuff Shaolin knows. There was no Shaolin, you stupid idiot. There was no Shaolin. These people brought it back. They rebuilt the temple. So by the 1980s, now CD Jen died young, all right? He, his, uh, one of his most well-known students is Zhu Tianzi, who taught the Rochuan publicly. Not exactly how it's supposed to be, but he taught it. And he showed some other forms. Um, and, you know, he, he, he said he created some of these forms. Well, I found them in really old manuscripts. 
like the Lehu Six Harmony Gong? Well, I found the exact movements in an old Shaolin book. I have a wall full of Chinese books and, and three shelves full of Shaolin in Chinese from all different people and plus correspondence from people who had their ancestors Chuen Bu, Chuen Pu, and they would show me the names of the forms, they would show me the years that things were created. It's all in my book, I documented everything. So anyway, those are the people that brought it back. There is no Shaolin without C.D. Jan. He and the people he taught brought it back to Shaolin. Now, the forms they do are modern sports wushu versions of the original forms, okay? Even some of the people that studied with C.D. Jen's teachers, and they're maybe, you call it a separate lineage, but they still study with his teachers. Um, pretty well-known Shaolin people. They're considered traditional, not, but even them don't do the forms exactly right. I don't know. They move form movements around, they exchange movements, they change them all in the application. The applications don't even look like the forms. So I don't know what's going on and I don't care. What I care is who taught what, when, and to who, and where, right? Like an anthropologist wants to know. And I wanna know how to do the forms the most ancient way, which I wrote about in the original history of Shaolin, I wrote about in the Kung Fu magazine and that made its way to China and uh, the Chinese government was against it. They were like, first of all, the intrusive people they are, the communists wanted to know who I was talking to, right? And the Ministry of Information was trying to break into my computer enough times. We're talking about the 90s when computers were new. There was a program called Zoom or something, not not the video thing now, and it showed you the name of the machine number and the name it was assigned to of who was trying to break into your computer. And it showed me the Ministry of Information in China was trying to break into my computer. They wanted to know who was supplying me information. Why? What the hell does the Chinese government, communist government care? Anyway, the United Nations made them world treasure, made Shaolin a world treasure and made Shaolin uh, martial arts world treasure. Then all these people from Holland and Germany and Belgium wanted to learn the traditional stuff that I wrote about in my magazine articles. And then the abbot of Shaolin was ecstatic and he told the Chinese government to back off of me, that I was doing them a service. And they started making millions of dollars a month from teaching traditional. Then all the Deng Feng school opened and all the other um, schools that are everywhere. Zhu Tianzi has a school. There's a lot of huge schools. And, and nowadays, with the overpopulation and too many males they have because of the genocide of females, uh, what are they gonna do with them? If they're not gonna be in the army and they don't have money and they don't have a good job to get an office job, they become kung fu teachers. So from the age of five, they stick them in these schools and they get rid of their kids, boop, all right? So then they learn and they become, okay? So the problem is everybody's doing modern wushu sports Shaolin and that is certainly not the original Shaolin and the original forms. There's the Lohan forms, the Rao Chuen forms. C.D. Jen taught both. He taught Ziniba, Lohan Chuen, and all those forms. And there's like 18 of them. And then there's uh, the Rao Chuen system. So he taught all that stuff. And then he died by the time he was 40, okay? So a lot of people die in that area from stomach cancer because the water is polluted. Thank you, Chinese government for idiots. So uh, yeah, there's people from the United States when they first were letting American, Chinese Americans back into China to visit and they went to study Tai Chi and all this other stuff. 
uh, I was talking to them and within a couple years of going there and drinking the water, they died of stomach cancer as well. So, what are you gonna do? Anyway, that's the important things to know about Shaolin. So the next step is what? What do we need to document? The Xiao Hong Chuan, the old version of the Xiao Hong Chuan. And then you'll see that it's got a lot of things that are like Tai Chi, all right? It's, it's the stuff that Yang Lu Chen learned first. Of course he learned the old version of the Z small Hong Chuan Xiao. Okay, now these words Da and Xiao in Shaolin, they don't mean big and small, no. They mean the greater area and the lesser area, the suburban. So a Xiao form comes from Deng village and the surrounding folk. And then the Da forms are the official Shaolin forms that came from the gates. Okay, here's another thing you need to know. And before, before the end of the Qing Dynasty, uh, there was Eastern Gate, Western Gate, Northern Gate, Southern Gate at Shaolin. And it goes way back to when the rebels were rebelling against uh, the original Qing Dynasty in the 1644. Okay, so the late 1600s, early 1700s. Um, each gate was had their own forms and they learned different ones so that if one gate was defeated, they wouldn't know how to defeat another gate. Okay, that's common sense. So, Bei Shaolin comes from Kanjia. One of the gates practiced that. One of the gates practiced old Tongbei, old Qinggang, old um, Hongquan, okay? And other gates did all different things. So that's all documented in, in, in the Shaolin Encyclopedia. Okay, so, oh, an important thing to know is Mugao Village is where the Li family was from, who were cousins of the Chen. So one of the Li's was a rebel that was fighting against the Ming Dynasty because of taxation and all that stuff. And they, the government came to kill him and all his family, but they were cousins of the Chen's. And the one Chen came there because he was an army officer to tell him not to do that anymore. So when he was there, this Lee guy, you know what he did to Shaolin? He was watching across the mountain and getting their schedule. And he saw that at a certain time of day, they were all in the temple, bowed down, praying. So he came in with a bunch of horses and he came in while they were praying when they weren't ready and he chopped them up with swords and he massacred over 200 Shaolin monks. So, they were the guardian monks that did martial arts. So, Li and Chen went to Shaolin Village, which was so close, and they looked through the library, and they gathered a lot of material. And most of the Chen forms, the names were Buddhist names. They were going around saying all oh, this baloney about them being Taoist. There's, this is Taoist. <laughs> the rest of the stuff is Buddhist. And look at all their weapons for them. All the names are Buddhist. Now, these French people also documented that there's almost a hundred moves that are in Shaolin that are found in the names of the Chen forms. The Chen staff, the Chen sword, the Chen spear, you name it, it's got it. Okay? It even has the deities that are Buddhist. So, don't get fooled again by the baloney people say. Just look at the facts and the facts show that. So these French people's book is necessary. Um, at least their blog to show up. Or you can get my book and you'll see it all in there as well. Okay, so a lot of stuff happened. So obviously Chen Village is only 50 miles from, <coughs> maybe 50 kilometers, which is 25 miles from Shaolin village and they were they went there when they were attacked and there was nobody to fight to stop them and they went there and they looked at the stuff now Mogao village practiced Shaolin from the 1500s I don't know what time in the 1500s 
1540, something like that. And their forms are very different. Their Hung Chuan is very different. It's very ancient. Um, all their other forms are different and they kind of look like one of the gates um, version of the forms. But that's a real big deal to know. So when they say Chen Village Martial Arts comes from Hung Chuan, it's because it comes from Mugao Village version of Hung Chuan Shaolin. All right, very complicated story, very complicated story. That's all in my book too. Uh, and then these, these Chen masters, one of them, Chen Zen Zing or something, got asked about this and he said, Oh, it's something we don't like to talk about. We even mentioned it in one of his books. Chen Zengli, he mentioned in his books that this tragic thing happened and yes, that's where um, his ancestor was able to look at the Shaolin material. Okay, and then from Mughal village. Okay, so they admitted it. And then Mark Chen in his uh, English um, Shal Chen Tai Chi book talks about the... Uh, you know, Taizu Chang Chuan form and said exactly what I've always said in my research. Yes, the forms map up and Chen Tai Chi is derived from it. Openly admitted it. I saw an exhibition once of a Chen form that was done. You know, there's all these little forms that they don't ever want to show people. But in China, there was some kind of exhibition and I saw them doing a form and I was like, it's Chen Tai Chi, but it's the emperor, I call it the emperor form, Zhao, you know, Zhao Kuan Yin Tai Zhu, Tai Zhu Chang Chuan. I go, it's done as Tai Chi. And I was like, whoa, you know, somewhere it's in, the, in all my stacks of stuff, somewhere. Um, I, I moved from New Jersey, North Carolina. Everything's in storage. So anyway, very complicated history. I hope you're still listening. It's 42 minutes. All right, thank you.